Welcome to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, where you will learn how to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, finance, turn around, and operate mobile home parks. And now, here is your host, the fifth largest mobile home park owner in the United States, Frank Rolf. Let's go on a mobile home buying shopping spree. This is Frank Roth with Mobile Home Park Mastery. I want to go over the five insider secrets to buying used mobile homes. Now, the first one, and I promise you this one is an absolute etched in stone given. You never want to buy a used mobile home that does not have more than one bedroom. Now, when I first got in the business and I got my first property, Glen Haven, I had no idea what I was doing. So when it came to filling vacant lots, I was always shopping around in the paper for mobile homes that were for sale, old used homes, but I had no idea what I was really looking for. And at one time, I saw this really, really good efficiency mobile home. Now, you're going to say, what the heck is an efficiency mobile home? Well, I'd never seen one either, but I was really intrigued by it. It was a mobile home that on one wall had a sliding glass door that opened up to the outside. And I thought, wow, if you take that sliding glass door, you meant a giant deck on it. Think how cool that would be. So you'd go in the stairs to the front door, go in the mobile home, have this big living area with sliding glass door that went out to a really cool deck. So I thought, I'll take it. I can make this into something really remarkable. People will really want this home. But the trade-off was it didn't have a bedroom. It had this giant living area and it had a kitchen. And it had a bathroom, but that's all that it had. It had no bedroom. I'm not sure why they built this, to be honest with you. To me, it was something that probably would work well maybe in California, but maybe not in Texas. But not knowing any better, I bought the home. I brought it back to Glenhaven. I built the really, really cool deck. I built the stairs. I cleaned it up. I repainted the inside. I thought it was the coolest mobile home of all time. I ran ads in the paper. Didn't say how many bedrooms, just, hey, I got a mobile home for sale or rent. And the people started coming in and they'd all walk in and they'd walk out. They'd walk in and they'd walk out. They'd walk in and they'd walk out. I'd say, why are you not buying this thing? And they'd say, we don't have no bedroom. I don't even know how to approach the idea of living in a mobile home with no bedroom. Well, you know, they make efficiency apartments. There's efficiency condos. I thought, no big deal. You just put in a hide a bed and you're set to go. Well, it doesn't matter what I thought. The customers didn't want it at all. It was a horrible, horrible fail. I considered maybe pulling it out of the park, but then I thought, well, that'll cost $5,000 to pull it out. I've got to find a way to make this work. So I went around and I bought some used furniture. I went ahead and bought a used hide-a-bed. I tried anything to make it palatable to somebody. And lo and behold, eventually by dropping the price and putting furniture in it, I found someone who would go ahead and take it. However, they didn't last long. I soon found that my little efficiency mobile home was nothing more than an incubator for people to hang out until they could find at least a home that had bedrooms in it. Not a very satisfactory experiment. So next thing you know, I'm out looking for homes again, and I see a one-bedroom. This is a much more modern one-bedroom, pitched roof, would be one of the most modern homes in Glenhaven. I was sold. This is perfect. My efficiency, that was a fail. But surely a brand newish home with one bedroom is a real winner. So I bought that. I brought it in. I built the front steps, back steps, cleaned it, painted it, put the ad in the paper. People came out, would walk in, they'd walk out. Nothing yet again. Couldn't give the darn thing away. I must have gone through 60 customers before I finally found anyone who would live in it. And kind of like the home that was the efficiency, it was really just an incubator till people could find a two-bedroom mobile home. So I just churned people, churn and churn and churn. The moral I learned then is never buy a one-bedroom home. Certainly never an efficiency, but also don't do a one-bedroom. Now, why is that? I showed that one bedroom to lots of people who it would have been perfect for. Lots of older men and women, perfectly sized, very pleasant. People just need more space. Mobile homes just are not very big things. And so a lot of people need that second bedroom, so they have some spot to put in their hobbies or bookcases or have a guest stay, something like that. But it's really, really hard to move one-bedroom homes. So the first insider secret to buy and use mobile homes is maybe you should stay away from those one-bedrooms unless you want to sit on that home for a long, long period of time. 
Number two insider secret, never buy homes that are less than 14 feet wide. I have bought 12 foot. I have bought 10 foot. Man, are those a problem. The 14 foot wide home appeals to everybody. On a 14 wide home, you're going to have a bedroom, a master bedroom that will hold a king sized bed and whatever other items you want to place in there. And that's a huge hit with the customer. But as you go progressively smaller than 14, what happens is you give up on that bed size. So a 12 wide home might be able to hold a queen size bed. When you get down to eight foot wide, only a double size bed will fit. So try and stick with the 14 wide homes. Now, there's still a very, very large number of homes that are 14 wide and bigger, all the way back to the 1980s. So you certainly can find some things. That gives you a, you know, a nearly a 30-year span to find a used home in. But don't venture back into those 70s homes unless you are willing to really, really have to wait to get a customer because 14 wide makes all of the difference. Number third insider secret, stay away from water problems. Water is the kryptonite to the mobile home. It is what can take a nice, beautiful-looking, sturdy mobile home and in a matter of moments, turn it into complete mush and mold and all kinds of issues. Never buy a used mobile home that has any evidence of having any water problems. Just stay completely away from them. If you look in a mobile home and you see that the ceiling in one room or throughout the home is sagging in the middle. What's happened there is there's been water intrusion from the roof. That ceiling has become wet and it started to sag with the weight of the water and as it's turning more into mush. And you never want to touch those homes. Even if you think, well, I could take that home and probably, what, take some little rose medallion nails and nail the thing back up. It's not getting the ceiling back up that's the problem. It's the fact of what else has the water done? Do you have mold in the home? Do you have other weak spots in the walls? Has your wiring been affected? Is your flooring affected? Just too many concerns. Bear in mind, this is 2017, 2018 in America. A lot of litigation issues. The last thing you want to do is be out there selling or renting structures that have the potential of having mold in them, even if it's harmless. This is America. You really don't want to be out there with that kind of litigation hanging over your head. So just stay away from homes that have water problems. Just let the go to the next guy. Keep shopping. Look for something different. Next thing, next insider secret. Be thinking that it's going to cost about $4,000 on average to fix a typical mobile home that you're going to buy that's used. So that should sober you up. It always seems to cost about 4000 2000 parts, 2000 labor. That means when you're out looking at an old used home, and that old used home is $6,000, it's probably more like 10000 And then you got $5,000 to move it. So you got to buy, if you're going to be a really good shopper, homes that are very, very cheap and that are in very, very good condition. If you can buy a home that needs only $1,000 of work, and you can buy that home for $3,000. Now you're talking. Now you're going to have a home in your park that's going to be under 10000 bucks. But always remember, it does cost significant money to fix these things. And for some reason, it always seems to average about $4,000 in most cases, unless you're a really, really good shopper. All it takes to blow your budget is the furnace is broken. All it takes to wreck your budget is you've got some additional plumbing issues, wiring issues. So always put a buffer in there in your brain. It may cost you as much as 4000 to fix it and another 5000 to move it. So if you're going to be a good mobile home shopper, you've got to watch for situations where the homes are very, very inexpensive and are in very, very good repair. Those costs will mount up very, very quickly. And don't forget, everything you do in the world of used mobile homes is taken away from money you could use towards a different kind of home. So if you're going to be putting... $15,000 in the 1980s home, I would have to say, what are you thinking? You could go ahead and get rid of that home and bring in a 1990s home with bigger rooms, better layout, newer design, much more attractive to the customer for the same price. So it costs money to fix these things. It costs roughly about 4000 on average. Always remember that when you're out shopping for the homes, the potential you've got that you may have to stick another 4000 in the home. And as a result, you've got to buy them really cheap and a really, really good repair. The last insider secret is you've got to have a title. Oh my gosh, I cannot emphasize to you enough how dreadful it is to get a title on a mobile home in America today. 
Let me give you just a quick example of how bad it is, how frustrating it is. I once had a mobile home in a mobile home park that I purchased, and mom and pop had everything together to send in and get the title decades earlier, but they never mailed it. I don't know why. He had every other title except this one, but he had a beautiful file. It had the bill of sale. It had all correspondence. It had everything. It even had the application all filled out. It even had a check attached. It even had a rusted paperclip holding the check onto the paperwork. But for whatever reason, he did not mail it in. All I can imagine he did was he put it in the file thinking, I'll mail that in tomorrow, and he never did. He probably just didn't have a stamp is what happened. So he put it in the file, thought, I'll go get a stamp. Later, he bought the stamps, but he forgot, oh, yeah, I got to send in that title application. So what happened was the title sitting there. It's exactly perfectly filled out. It's got a check. Hey, I can change the amount of the check, right? So I write this really nice letter to the Texas Department of Transportation. And I said, here, I've got this mobile home and the title application is perfect, as you can see. And I've got the bill of sale and everything here, but it's not on your form today. It's on the form as it was 20, 30 years ago, but the form is not changed. All that has changed is your logo. So please find all the paperwork and a new check And isn't that an interesting story? And please give me my title and send it away. About a month later, I get back, denied. No reason why, just denied. So I call, and if you've ever called the folks on mobile home titles, and this isn't true in all states, but in most, you can be on hold for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. So you put it on speakerphone, you do other things while you're waiting for someone to pick up. You hope that when they pick up, you can grab the phone before they hang up or you have to do it all over again. So I finally get to somebody and I tell them my sad story of how I come to have this paperwork that's perfect and ready to go, but has the wrong logo on it. And they say, well, I'm sorry, we will not take it unless it has the modern logo. Now, first off, think how stupid that is. Why can you not take the application, which has all of the correct information, notarized because of a stupid logo. I could not understand that, but no matter what I said, they were adamant. No, has to have the current logo on it. I guess that is how they know that it's what in keeping with the modern code. They want it too lazy to proofread it. I'm not really sure. So I said, well, then, then what do I do? Because this thing is like 20, 30 years old, does not have the modern logo. And here's what the lady said. She said, okay, here's what you got to do. All you have to do is go ahead and fill it out again on the app with a new logo and get it signed and notarized. It's not that big a deal. So I said, well, in case you had told me that, I already have talked to mom and pop who I bought the part from. And they're more than happy to sign and notarize the new one. But the person they bought the home from is dead. So what do I do? They said, well, here's what you do. You get a copy of the will of the person who died. Show who they left the home to. Contact that person and have that person sign and notarize it. Can you imagine how impossible that would be? I don't honestly know how you get a will from somebody who died in a mobile home park two decades ago. Where do you even get that data? And then how would I even find the heir? And what if the will doesn't even stipulate what happens with the mobile homes? A lot of times the heirs don't want mobile homes. And beyond that, the guy thought he sold it to the park owner, so it won't even reference the mobile home, right? Absolutely absurd. So the moral of it is, the tiling industry on mobile homes is very, very difficult in America. I'll give you another story. I bought a mobile home at an unpaid tax auction in Illinois a few years ago. So I went all the way to Springfield, Illinois, to buy a home that was located in a mobile home park that we owned. So I'm the high bidder, And they promise you at the auction, it's right there in the auction materials, that if you buy at the auction, you guarantee you'll have title to whatever you buy within 60 days, whether it's a stick built home, it could be a strip shopping center, piece of land, in this case, a mobile home. So I buy the mobile home, 60 days comes by, I have nothing. I call the state of Illinois and say, hey, where is my title? They say, we're working on it. No deadline, though. I called back another month. I said, you promised it in 60. I've got nothing. They said, hey, we're working on it. I didn't get it for a year and a half. That's kind of how people look at mobile home titling. They don't look at it as really being important. As a result, they back burner it. And typically in mobile home park title departments or mobile home title departments in the U.S., 
you have a staff that is a paltry number based on how many applications that they have. So titling is near complete anarchy. The moral is never, ever, ever buy a mobile home without a title. I don't care how good a deal it is. Don't do it. The brain damage that will happen to you for having tried and obtained that title is, is horrid. It is, if you ask most mobile home park owners in America, what is the worst thing that you can think of in the entire mobile home park industry? Nine out of 10 will say the titling. That's how bad it is. So don't do that to yourself. Don't go around buying mobile homes and just inviting new issues about getting titling. It's just not a good idea. Now, in our next segment of this five-part series, we're going to be talking about the insider secrets to remodeling mobile homes. This is Frank Roth with Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at mhpmastery.com to subscribe to the show, read our show transcriptions, and access all of our great information on mobile home park investing. 